Hey guys, Mark Farash at ProTech Dog Training. Got up this morning and I got a threat on one of my uh, police boards. It's a closed list that you've got to be uh, approved to become, get on there. But they have a, a mixed group of people, but a lot of uh, police canine handlers throughout the United States. So most of the conversation is led by them. And uh, somebody like me that's an outside uh, dog trainer is allowed, but it's because I have uh, my toes in the water towards law enforcement. The breeding I do and some of the training I do is more personal protection and oriented aided towards that. But you have to be added to the group and you have to be uh, have usually a reference, that sort of thing. So, But it was a great morning, Sunday morning. Get up, a lot of people go to church. Well, I got up and I had this thread and I felt like I was in church. A <laughs> great thread. Somebody asked... Uh, in regards to what is a better bite posture, pulling or pushing? Because right now, a lot of people know they're getting the protection. You're doing PSA and you're doing some of the other sports and law enforcement is, is heavy into this. The, the whole concept of a dog pushing into the bite, having a full mouth bite and taking it to the decoy and pushing versus what has been known for years that's come from the Schutzen, which is basically pulling. And if you didn't think about it, they judge a dog for really good solid grips in Schutzen, IGP, IPO, whatever they're calling it this year. But at the same time, that power comes from how that dog gives the bite to the decoy and kind of takes him off balance and will be pulling his, his sleeve behind the guy's back. And they judge the dog off of that. Does he have that power? Is he really bringing the fight to the bad guy in that posture that's kind of dictated by the criteria of the short sport? of IPO, IGP, Schutzen, whatever you want to call it, this year, okay? So the thread basically was which one do you prefer and why, okay? And so all the guys got in and they started giving their replies. And these are professionals. I mean, these guys, are, this is what they live. I mean, they're, out, they're really experiencing it on the street. They've also got to deal with the legal system where they get in a court of law where uh, damage to the suspect and getting ripped up really is not a good thing, right? They want a nice full mouth bite and they want disabilitating pain. They want pain that's gonna take the dog, they call it compliant, compliance, right? Where the bad guy is gonna to comply to the directions and actually let himself be put in handcuffs and stop fighting the dog, right? That compliance bite is what they call it, right? So they want a full mouth bite and then the, the, the fad of the day is basically pushing. And, and they know that. So my question to you guys, that most of you guys that watch watch my YouTube videos and that kind of thing, a lot of you guys are sport dog trainers or you're laymen in the respect of not really having that full perspective that law enforcement might have. Keep in mind, the law enforcement has to deal with the court system. They also have to, to deal with the injuries that that dog might put on the suspect, depending on the situation. A lot of times it's because the suspect doesn't comply. And so if he's gonna fight the dog, he's all hyped up on drugs. I'll give you a good example. I went to uh, Home Depot one day. And I had a Malinois with me and I was walking around the store and this kid come up to me and he was Hispanic, looked like a little bit of a gang banger. I'm not gonna profile, but it's pretty obvious. And he goes, what kind of dog is that? And I said, it's a Malinois. He goes, yeah, same dog that bit me. And he pulls up his shirt, and he was scarred all over his body, you know. And all I could, I pictured in my mind right away that this idiot, excuse me for saying that if you're watching this, um, but bottom line is that he fought, you know, and he, he was probably hyped up on drugs. Who knows, you know. But when you don't comply, you're going to get ripped up, you know. That's going to be more damage on you. So, um a lot of times a lot better if you just comply with what's going on and take the pain and and uh, submit, you know what I mean? It'd be a lot less damage to you bodily if you do, you know, but the bad guys don't realize that they're hyped up on drugs. The adrenaline and fear, all the stuff that causes this sort of thing to happen uh, is prevalent. So um, my question to you guys, is which one do you think, you, which one do you like and why? Do you like pushing? Do you like pulling? What do you think is more applicable on the street? Or what do you think is more applicable with, with you, you, you know, why do you do the type of uh, 
work that you do and what are you trying to get the dog to show you in the work, right? Um, in the, back to that thread, I, I think what I got out of it was that um, it came back, one gentleman answered a great answer and he says, you know, it's really about emotionally where the dog is at. And that's about confidence, emotion, you know, is, is, is the dog clear headed? Is he confident with himself where he's just going to go in and take his bite and, and show power with a prominence that's not dictated by insecurity and uh, lack of confidence, which would cause more ripping and that's where the growling comes from, right? Which is more damage. So his, his point of view was that, you know, that's really where's the dog's head at in the work. You know, I mean, you hear me talking about that all the time. And that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. It really is denoted by where's the dog's head at in the work. Because if he's a strong, confident dog, he's going to go in and take power over the bad guy, you know, over the, in their, their realm, the suspect, right? So that's what matters, you know, to me anyway. You know, I want my dog to be confident. I want him to go in there and show confidence with how he bites, right? Um, and then in a court of law, we want to create a full mouth bite that creates com pain compliance so that the dog doesn't do as much damage, right? And that makes a lot of sense to me. So just curious to see what you guys reply. You know, and some of you are professionals, some of you are trainers. Uh, what do you think? Talk to you later. I'm on my way down to do some bite work with the Galaxy Ships and Club with Norman Augustine. And it's a Sunday and traffic's pretty busy with the holiday weekend. So hopefully I'll get back up without too much traffic. Everybody's heading home. So it's probably going to be a parking lot on the way back up the hill here. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, signing off.